I want to teach you three simple words today. Three simple words to speak against your problems, against whatever is bothering you or weighing you down. In fact, use these three simple words against the devil full stop. And these words are, no matter what. No matter what the devil tries, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. No matter what my emotions say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I have been given peace beyond understanding. No matter what the doctor said, by his stripes, I am healed. No matter what your stepmother or your stepfather did, God says in Isaiah 54, verse 10, Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. No matter what your supervisor said, your colleague, your peer, or your teacher, no matter what they said, the Lord said, you are the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down. So often, too often, we invite negative things into our circumstances because of what we say. But I want to encourage you to say something against the attacks of the devil. Speak against that stronghold. Speak against your situation and don't speak in vain. Don't speak empty affirmations. Speak against everything that is against God's will in your life. No matter what it is that you face, there is a verse. There is a promise that you can hold on to. If the problem is to do with addiction, Jesus Christ is well able to set you free no matter what because 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. But God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. If the problem is in your marriage, well, God is capable of healing your marriage no matter what. Because the Bible says in Mark 10, verse 9, Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. No one means neither you or your other half, or anyone outside the marriage. God is capable of healing whatever is broken in your life. He is capable of doing wonders. But you also have to speak over yourself, too. Speak his word upon your life. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your precious word. Your word which I can use as a weapon against the enemy's attacks. Your word is living and powerful, meaning that it can actively counter the negative situations in my life if I speak it with faith. And so, Father, I pray for relentless faith. I pray for powerful, strong faith, King Jesus. The faith to be able to speak to any situation and say, no matter what, God will deliver me from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. Give me grace, Lord Jesus. The grace to be able to say, no matter what, I will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. I will not fear the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. I pray for the faith to be able to stand and say, no matter what, I will be obedient to Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, and I will say that I will be strong and courageous. I will not be afraid. I will not be discouraged. For the Lord my God will be with me wherever I go. 
Thank you for such a word that empowers me, Lord. And Father, I reject the spirit of fear. I denounce it, I rebuke it, and I cast it down in my life. In Jesus' name. My hope rests in you, King Jesus. Not in military bunkers or in weapons. Not in any person or establishment in this world. But my hope and trust, and the reason I do not fear, is because of the accomplished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. I don't fear sickness or disease. I don't fear the rejection of man. I don't fear any demon. Because 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I have nothing to fear because my stronghold is your arms, Lord Jesus. My fortress is in Jesus. My bunker is in Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. In you and in you alone, King Jesus, can I truly say I have victory. It's because of your power that I am able to speak against any negative circumstances and declare victory. It's because of the Lord that I can say no matter what any principality or ruler of darkness may try, I am more than a conqueror. I am covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are ever faithful, Lord Jesus. And no matter what comes in this world, your word is true and you are a good God. No matter what I face in this world, I claim Psalm 23, verse 6 over my life. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You are well able to make straight everything that is crooked before me. You are well able, Master, to make a way where there seems to be no way. You are well able to make me whole to mend me where I am broken, to lift me when I am down, and to be a safe bridge over troubled water. For this reason, Master, I declare Isaiah chapter 25, verse 1, O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. I declare Psalm 28, verse 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and he helps me. My heart leaps for joy and with my song, I praise him. I thank you for listening to my prayer, Lord. I glorify your name and I give you all the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, I pray. Amen. No matter what. No matter what the devil tries, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. No matter what my emotions say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I have been given peace beyond understanding. No matter what the doctor said, by his stripes, I am healed. No matter what your supervisor said, your colleague, your peer, or your teacher, no matter what they said, the Lord said, you are the head and not the tail, and you shall only go up and not down. Speak against everything that is against God's will in your life. Who orders your steps? And I ask this question because Psalm 119 verse 133 says, 
Keep steady my steps, according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. The King James translation says, Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Now I believe for us to say, Order my steps, Lord, we must acknowledge that our steps can be led or directed by many other things. A person's steps can be led by pride, and if you are led by pride, then Proverbs chapter 16 verse 18 says, Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Pride leads to destruction. A person's steps can be led by lust, and if you are led by lust, then 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11 says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Lust leads to a war against your soul. A different translation of 1 Peter 2.11 says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against the soul. So I will ask the question again, who orders your steps? Do you begin your day by calling out to the Lord so that he may guide you, so that he may take your hand and take control and take priority in your decisions, in your choices and with what you want to focus on? Who orders your steps? Is the Lord's word a lamp unto your feet? When it comes to the manner in which you walk, or rather, when it comes to who you are led by, we should all be aware that there is a war between the flesh and the spirit. Because Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says, But I say, walk by the spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh, for these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. The flesh is filled with the love of the world, a love of self, pride, sinfulness and unholiness, that's all within the flesh. But the Spirit, to walk in the Spirit is to walk in a manner that is completely and totally devoted to Jesus Christ. One way to describe walking in the Spirit can be found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So I encourage you to desire and submit to being led by the Lord. Be led by His Word. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Psalm 119 from verse 133 says, Keep steady my steps according to your promise, and let no iniquity get dominion over me. Redeem me from man's oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears, because people do not keep your law. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, 
you are worthy of all of my praise. I pray that I would be so filled with the Holy Spirit that I may walk in a manner pleasing to you. Help me to walk habitually in the Spirit, to walk by faith and not by sight. Give me a heart that seeks the Holy Spirit's counsel and His leadership. Give me a heart and an ear that is responsive to His guidance, because if I am led by the Holy Spirit, then I will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Only by the power of your Spirit, Lord, can I reject the sinful nature of the flesh. It's only through your might that I can walk in victory over sin. So I pray that you would give me the grace to walk in the Spirit always. I pray that I would bear the fruit of the Spirit, which according to Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness and faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. I pray that my life may be characterized by the fruits of the Spirit, Lord. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would remove any barriers blocking my heart from being receptive to you. Anything that is forming an obstacle between you and me, Lord, would you remove that obstacle from my life? May the Holy Spirit work within me, not only to comfort and counsel me, but to convict and to correct me. May the Holy Spirit work to challenge me and help me to conquer sin. Your word in John chapter 14, verse 15 to 18 says, If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you, Father, I thank you that you have given us as believers the spirit of truth. You have not left us as orphans, and so I invite the spirit of truth into my life. May the spirit of truth help me to see your word as guidance for my life. May he cause me to follow Psalm chapter 1, which tells me how I should walk. For if I do not walk in the counsel of the wicked, if I decide not to follow the example or the advice of the wicked, then I am blessed and favoured by the Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit, so that I may not stand in the path of sinners, nor sit down to rest in the seat of scoffers, but instead may I be led by Jesus Christ. I pray that my delight may be in the law of the Lord. I pray that my delight may be in God's precepts and teachings. And only in your word, Lord, will I habitually meditate day and night. Fill me with more of you, God, and lead me. Pour out your spirit because it is through the guidance, the intercession of the Holy Spirit, that helps me to establish a closer relationship with you, my Lord. And so I need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I need to be led by your Spirit, Lord, because Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps 
in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I thank you for the Holy Spirit in my life, Lord. I praise your name and ask that you order my steps from today and forevermore. Thank you for listening to my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. Have you ever had an experience where you want to get someone's attention and they walk right by you? It can be a crushing feeling when you acknowledge someone and they pay no mind to you. They walk right by you or look right past you as though you are invisible. But how wonderful is it to know that God does not behave like humans. The Lord doesn't act like a person who will deliberately ignore you. And some of you listening may be going through a period of waiting. And that waiting may have you feeling like you're being ignored. It may feel like you're not being heard. But if you're feeling this way, then there's something I want you to know. I want you to know that Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. So man of God, woman of God, take heart. Dry your weeping eyes. Be strong and be of good cheer even as you wait. Don't place the Lord in the same category as humans. Don't think that he's ignoring you. Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43 say, As he drew near to Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. And hearing a crowd going by, he inquired what this meant. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who were in front rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he came near, he asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Recover your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Blind Bartimaeus was sitting on the side of the road when he heard Jesus was passing by. Who knows how long he'd been sitting there, waiting, hoping, wishing, believing for something to change. Who knows how many days and nights He spent on that roadside begging. Who knows how many days he sat there through the rain, through the heat, just waiting. But the amazing thing is, he still had hope. Regardless of how long or how many years he'd been there, he still had faith. And I know he had faith because of the fact that he kept shouting, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Even after being told to be quiet, the fact that he kept shouting for Jesus, this tells me that he still had faith that if Jesus heard him, the Lord would not pass him by. He just knew that God would not overlook him. So let this encourage you. What ever your need is. Jesus Christ will not pass you by. 
if you will only have faith. Now let us pray. Father God, thank you for your goodness. Your word says in Psalm 34, verses 17 to 18, When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Hear my cry today, Lord. Deliver me from all of my troubles. Father God, I pray for every believer who is listening right now. Don't pass us by, Lord. Hear the cry of our hearts. Just as blind Bartimaeus got your attention, may you hear us in our place of need today, God. In our moment of desperation, we call upon the name of Jesus. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust, we trust in the name of the Lord our God. When we call upon your name, Lord, there is freedom. We will no longer be trapped by anything that is oppressive or depressive. When we call upon the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that is when we will find rescue and refuge. That is where we will find healing and hope. Your word says in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 16, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You are merciful and kind, Lord, a God who is always willing to help those who seek you sincerely. All too often, we wallow in shame and guilt. We prolong our sufferings by trying to take matters in our own hands or by simply not having patience. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive me if I have doubted in any way, shape, or form. Forgive me if I haven't stood strong in my belief that you will not pass me by when I call on your name. Forgive me if I have ever pushed you aside because of impatience or arrogance or pride. Instead, Lord Jesus, I invite you right into the middle of my storm. I will wait on you, King Jesus. I will turn to you instead of trying to fix things on my own. Because on my own, I am weak. On my own, I become vulnerable to my emotions. But in you, with you, I am strong. I am made whole and I am led by your Spirit. Help me to wait patiently on you, because your word says in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, Therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. I am indeed blessed, when I wait on you. So I pray that you would help me to renew my mind and dismiss any thoughts that lead me to question your impeccable track record of delivering your children time after time. Help me to cast down the thoughts and whispers from the devil that say you will reject me or condemn me. Father, I'm making the choice to not take matters into my own hands. But instead, I relinquish control and wait on you. I am choosing to wait patiently in prayer and to bring my requests before you, Father. Psalm 37 verse 7 says, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Be blessed and glorified, O King Jesus. Lead me in your truth and in your wisdom. Lord, I thank you for hearing my prayer. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
Dear child of God, why do you worry? Why are you downcast and depressed? Do you not know who God says you are? God says that you are loved. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, what I want you to do today is remove the words, the world, and replace it with the word, me. I want you to personalize the verse. For God so loved me that he gave his one and only son so that I may believe in him and not perish but have eternal life. I encourage you to embrace the word of the Lord because Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Once again, let's personalize and apply God's word to our lives. The Lord my God is with me, the mighty warrior who saves me. He will take great delight in me. In his love, he will no longer rebuke me, but will rejoice over me with singing. He will rejoice over me with singing. Claim God's word, saints. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. In him I have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of my sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Claim the word of God. Deuteronomy 28 verse 3 says, I will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Verse 6, I will be blessed when I come in and blessed when I go out. Verse 7, The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against me will be defeated before me. They will come at me from one direction, but flee from me in seven. Dear child of God, there is power. There is life. There is victory when you declare God's promises over your life. And finally, I want you to claim this verse in the book of Luke. And it's one of those passages in scripture that gives us authority as children of God. It's one of those verses that empower us and can cause you to straighten up your back and raise your head because of the authority you're given by Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Once again, I encourage you to really own this verse and apply it to yourself. I have been given the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm me. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, my God Almighty, the one who is from everlasting to everlasting, be praised, be glorified, and lifted high. You are he who opens doors that no man can shut, and you can close doors that no man can open. I bow down and ask that you look upon me with mercy. Together with everyone under the sound of my voice, we acknowledge that we are not on the same level as you. You are divine. You are righteous and you are true. Your ways, O oh God, are higher. Your thoughts are higher. 
You neither sleep nor slumber, God. We bow down to you, Jesus. Help us, Holy Spirit, and remove the scales from our eyes so that we can truly see how desperately we need Jesus Christ in our everyday lives. We, as people, are limited. We are limited in strength, we're limited in power, and we're limited by nature and time. But the Lord, (laughs) you are limitless. Lord Jesus, you are worthy of praise because you are limitless in all your ways. You are not bound by time. You are not bound by nature. You are God and God alone. You speak and it is done. You speak and it is truth because you are not a man who should lie. Because of this, I yield to you. I yield to your Holy Spirit. I surrender and say that my life is yours. It's in your hands. I bow down and submit to your word. May I be a person who is obedient and attentive to God's word. May I be a person who lives a life that's principled by your word, Lord Jesus. May the Holy Spirit give me the discipline to meditate on the Word of God day and night. I pray that the worship that comes forth from my heart may be to say, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I choose not to place my faith in man. My faith is not in the government or any ruling authorities. My faith is not in anything that I can see in the world around me, but I confess that my faith is in the living Son of God, Jesus Christ. My faith is in the one who spoke the words, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Lord, as your child, I choose to believe in only who and what you say I am. I will trust only in the assurance of your word because it is life to those who believe. It's in your endless love that I have my faith anchored. You loved me before I even knew you. You first loved me, Lord, while I was still in my mother's womb. Your word says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world, that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. I thank you for such a precious and unfailing love. A love that will never let me down. A love that will never abandon me. I appreciate you, Lord, and I am grateful for all you do. Master, I thank you. I adore your name, and I say that you are holy. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 44 say, And there was a woman who had had a discharge of blood for twelve years, and though she had spent all her living on physicians, she could not be healed by anyone. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, and immediately her discharge of blood ceased. Now, I have a question. If the woman with the issue of blood hadn't suffered for so long, would she have known that Jesus is a healer? 
Genesis 37, verses 23 to 24 say, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the robe of many colors that he wore, and they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Later on in the Bible, Genesis chapter 42, verse 6 says, Now Joseph was governor over the land. He was the one who sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brothers came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the ground. So, if Joseph wasn't rejected by his brothers, if he wasn't stripped and thrown into a pit, if he wasn't sold as a slave, would Joseph have ever known that God can take someone who was rejected by his own family members and favored that person so much so that he could become one of the most powerful men in the land at that time? If Job had not lost everything, if he hadn't lost his sons and daughters, if he hadn't lost his ox and his donkeys, his sheep and his wealth, if he had not lost his health even, then would Job have ever known that God can restore double what the enemy stole? If Daniel wasn't thrown in a lion's den, would he have ever known that God's protection is far better, far superior than anything else in this world? Paul and Silas, if they were never arrested and placed in chains, tell me, how could they have known that God's power can set anyone free from any type of bondage? All throughout the Bible, there are people who have been through tough and painful situations. But those tough and painful situations all offered an opportunity for God to demonstrate that He is the ultimate healer. He is the most superior form of protection. He is the one who can restore and make a garden from a desert. He is the only one who can favor someone who's been rejected and lift them up so that they can dine on a table in the presence of their enemies. Saints, believe in God. There is a reason for the season you're in right now. Let us pray. King Jesus, the Almighty One, teach me to be more trusting. Help me to build my faith. May the Holy Ghost teach me and remind me that the troubles I face, the pain that I feel, the people who reject me can all be a blessing in disguise. The tough situations and trials I go through can be the Lord setting me up. You could be positioning me for increase, for healing, for breakthrough. Holy Spirit, help me to see that the Lord sometimes uses our troubles to remind us that He is a deliverer. He is our Savior. He is our hope and rescue. He is the chief cornerstone and the solution to all of our problems. Father, even though it may hurt when trouble comes about, please give me the grace to keep an eternal perspective. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 17 says, For this light momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. So Lord, help me to have an attitude that remains positive and hopeful in you, Lord Jesus. Because the troubles I face, no matter how difficult or how overbearing they may seem at the time, they are in fact light because they are only there for a short while and they pale in comparison to the joy that awaits me in heaven. Lord, you are faithful to empower. You are faithful to help me stand strong and victorious and not to be defeated. And because Jesus is victorious over Satan, I too can walk in victory. So I declare 
that through the grace of God, I have the faith to stand against Satan's attacks and I will win. I am not defeated by my troubles in Jesus' name. I am not oppressed by my afflictions in Jesus' name. As long as I hold on to you, Lord Jesus, I will live and enjoy a victorious life. I will know you as a healer. I will know you as the one who can restore double what the enemy stole. I will know you as my shield and my protector. Enlighten my spirit, Father, and help me to see through the eyes of faith. Help me, Lord, so that the eyes of my faith may lead me to walk in your will. Father, I believe that the battle has already been won because in you, I have peace. Though in this world, I may have tribulation, I will take heart. I will be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. Lord, your word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 17, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand firm. Hold your position and see the salvation of the Lord on your behalf, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them and the Lord will be with you. I speak this word over my life. I do not need to fight my own battles because the Lord will fight for me and I will hold my peace. I will stand firm and I will stand in faith. In the faith that I am assured of nothing less than victory. I will continue to stand in the faith that I am an overcomer through Christ who strengthens me. Your word says, do not be afraid and do not be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Be with me, Lord because I will face my battles and I'll face them with the knowledge that you are with me. Lord Jesus, with you by my side, with you at the center of my heart, how can I be defeated by the troubles of this world? How can I be defeated by the schemes of the enemy? How can I be beaten when your word says in Romans 8, verses 37 to 39, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. God, I thank you for the victory. I thank you for everlasting peace. I thank you for an abundance of blessings. And above all, God, I thank you for showing me mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. We all need strength from God in our lives. And I believe there are three main reasons why we should be seeking strength from above each and every day. The first being to stand, to stand firm when the enemy attacks. This means that when we see trouble heading our way, we don't turn the other way and run. We don't call our neighbors or our parents looking for a place to run and hide. We need strength from the Lord to stand and to stand firm in faith. To stand firm in the belief that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Secondly, we need strength from God to withstand the enemy's attacks when they do come. We might be under attack for a season. It could be a health crisis. 
it could be financial, it could be marital or many different reasons. But we should be completely focused on the Lord because He is the one that will grant us the strength to endure, the strength to withstand that season of attack or difficulty. And finally, I believe that we need strength from the Lord in order to overcome and gain the victory. So I encourage you to rely on God's strength. We need to stand firm in faith in order for us to be unshakable. And to do so, we must be rooted in Jesus Christ. As believers, when we see the devil attack, we do not and should not run away and hide. Instead, we are to plant our feet in God's word and in his promises. We are to put on the full armor of God and begin to declare his word. 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 tells us that greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. We are to stand and declare Romans chapter 8 verse 31 If God is for us, who can be against us? Stand and declare Romans chapter 8 verse 37 In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We need the strength that comes only from Jesus Christ so that we can endure, so that we can withstand or hold off and resist the onslaught of the enemy. If we tried to do things with our own strength, we may be successful for a day or two, but eventually our flesh will fail us. But when we lean on the power and might of Jesus Christ, that's where we have an advantage. That's where we can find true strength. Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 to 31, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. We need God's strength to endure because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And finally, strength that comes from Jesus Christ will always lead us to victory. The Bible says in Exodus 15 verse 2, The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Other translations say, He has become my victory. He is my God and I will praise Him. My Father's God and I will exalt Him. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, help me to lean on you for strength. Help me to look only to you as the source of my strength, Father. When my situation looks dim and bleak, when the mountain ahead of me looks to be too great, I am encouraged by your word. 
your word that says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I will be strong and courageous because you are with me, Lord Jesus. You will cover me wherever I go. You will sustain me to stand, to endure, and to ultimately gain victory over the devil. So I speak and I declare the strength and might of Jesus Christ to begin operating in my life today. I say that the strength of the Holy Spirit is active in my life and will help me to overcome. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. So I know that I can stand strong because of the great joy that I have in you, Lord Jesus. No matter how the situation looks, Regardless, if I don't know the outcome, I have eternal hope in Jesus Christ. He is the great assurance that I have, even when things seem uncertain. Grant me divine strength in every season of my life, Lord. When I encounter times that are difficult, give me the strength to overcome King Jesus. When I am tempted or my flesh is weak, give me the strength to endure. When I am tired or feeling low, may you give me the strength to press forward, the strength to hold on and keep moving in the name of the Lord. I come to you, Heavenly Father, because you are an almighty God. All power in heaven and on earth belongs to you. Your voice is like many waters, and when you speak, mountains tremble. The wind and waves, all of nature, obeys your voice, King Jesus. I pray that your light would shine through my life. A light that is stronger than the darkness of this world, a light that is pure and more powerful than evil. I am so glad that you are on my side. I am so thankful that I can say if God is for me, who can be against me? I am so glad that your word tells me nothing can take me away from your love. Romans 8 verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? Thank you, Lord, for reassuring me that nothing will be able to separate me from you. Thank you, Lord, for reassuring me that your love is strong and it is unbreakable. I am so grateful for your care. I pray that you would grant me strength in my time of need, Lord. Give me strength in my day of trouble. I thank you for listening to my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ I pray. Amen.